I just to check it out now. Holy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, yo, one of the top five stupidest things you could do in life is basically decide to be a screen nigga, okay? Basically choosing to become a dummy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I say that, I have nothing against the screen dudes, but really, those people subscribe to a way of life and codes that usually don't benefit them, it usually benefits a hierarchy or a structure or people who are already manipulating them then probably even manipulate him to join the gang, okay? Now you hear a lot about the street codes, but who are the street codes meant to protect? You always hear, yo, no snitching. But in reality, there's always going to be a snitch, okay? Also, even if you don't snitch, usually the prosecutor still convicts you. So again, it becomes a case of survival. So when you hear about the streets, you never really see these codes actually, like, bear out in court. We never really see none of this stuff, okay? Now... I'm not sitting here advocating snitching, okay? And by the way, I do advocate loyalty. Uh, by the way, we've always just kind of defined snitching to be you do the crime with an individual that you tell on said individual, okay? Nobody's saying that's even honorable, right? However, these days, and this is what the streets have done, it's manipulate a lot of young people into broadening those type of triggering terms to mean anything. What am I talking about? These days, snitching is talking to the police at all, okay? Now, in this particular case I'm about to cover, they've now actually expanded the definition of snitching to include taking a plea agreement. Now, if you guys ever been to court, I mean traffic court, anything, you got to know that the plea agreement is basically how 90% of cases actually end from federal court down to traffic court. The, the, the harsh reality is that the courts don't have all day and all night to be doing trials all day. This ain't law and order, motherfucker. So basically, what usually happens is if you go to court, you're facing five years. Listen, say the case is kind of strong, but kind of could be weak as well. Prosecutor might come to you and say, bro, how about you just do six months in jail and be on probation for two years afterwards? Hey, you don't you don't risk going to trial and blowing trial and taking five years. And also, you save us some time and you give us a conviction. They care about a conviction. You care about staying out of jail. That sometimes is a very good deal for people who knows, hey, I'm not all the way innocent. And also, I don't want to take the chance to go to trial, okay? That's how the system gets played. Now, here's the thing about the plea agreement. When you get to court and you're taking a plea, right? That's an agreement between your lawyer and the prosecutor that you are going to usually cop out to a lower charge and also get a lower sentence. And the prosecutor is going to vouch for you to say, hey, because he cooperated in the plea agreement, he should get a lesser sentence. Now, that's not snitching. But this is a part that people are now reimagining to be snitching. When you're taking a plea agreement, it is actually mandated that you have to plead guilty and kind of confess to the sequence of events that you're pleading guilty for, right? So, for example, if you, I don't know, say you got, it was like an aggravated robbery, uh, uh, aggravated assault and robbery charge, okay? Now they're just going to give you uh, an assault charge, okay? You literally have to go in court, right? So, so your plea agreement is going to be for the assault charge. The bigger, the bigger charge that you had before was a, a aggravated assault and robbery, right? Say the plea agreement was just for assault. You got to go in there and be like, yeah, I did punch that dude in the face. Yeah, I did beat him up. And you got to admit that on in court, okay? They're going to read it out. You got to be like, yes, your honor, I did do this. And they're going to have that on the record in case you ever appeal. But because the screech is so dumb and because screech individuals are just peons usually being manipulated by other people that's higher up in the gang, they have now turned what that part of the plea agreement is into complete snitching, okay? They are now saying if you're taking a plea, you're snitching. Now, let me explain. There's a guy named Yak Gotti, okay? Now, Yak Gotti, you guys might not know, but I'll tell you who he is. He's the guy who was sitting or standing on wife and Lucci's, like, you know, uh, Mercedes while wife and Lucci was in the mall. He's down with the YSL camp. Now, everybody's eager to find who's going to be the snitch in this YSL case. It's 28 people indicted. Now, people are saying that Yak Gotti is snitching. You know why? Because there's an article about a 2015 case that he caught, which was a gun case. Now, let me just read this real quick and let me explain what happened, right? Now, he took a plea in the case, to, just to let you know how it ended, and he copped out to all the guns. However, because of the situation, he had to 
he had to add the sequence of events. By the way, nobody else was charged. Nobody else went to jail. And actually, they released the individual who was facing charges, okay? So basically, he took the rap. However, today on social media, they're wondering if he's a snitch. You know why? Because the streets are dumb, okay? Let's read this uh, article excerpt. It says, on October 1st, 2015, Kendricks and passenger Martinez Antoine Arnold fled a traffic stop and engaged in a short high-speed chase that ended after Kendrick ran a stop sign, lost control of the vehicle, and hit a guardrail. Police apprehended the men after they attempted to flee on foot. Upon searching the vehicle, officers discovered a small amount of marijuana as well as a pistol and a semi-automatic rifle, both loaded. Later, investigations revealed both firearms were stolen. In subsequent interview with police, Kendricks admitted that he owned the rifle and that he lent the rifle to Arnold, who planned to use it that night to retaliate against a rival gang who beat him up. Kendricks also told police that the pistol was his and described an unrelated incident. Now, the guy named Kendricks is actually uh, Yak Gotti, okay? I have to believe the other guy is Little Duke. Now, Little Duke apparently had got beat up, right? And apparently they're saying that he was borrowing or was about to use a gun that belonged to Yak Gotti to go do some shit that he never did, right? However, what they did catch him with is the guns. So essentially what, what, what Kendricks, uh, which is uh, Yak Gotti, told the court, right? He took in the plea agreement, right? It was my guns. And I did give that guy the gun because they were trying to put the guns on both of them, okay? Essentially, the guy pled guilty and took both guns. People are now saying just because there's a narrative form of the police who said that uh, uh, um, Duke was going to use the gun later, they're saying that because Yak Gotti snitched on him when how could you snitch on somebody when nothing happened, right? Little Duke never used the guns. Lil Duke never did anything retaliatory to whoever beat him up, okay? So in that particular situation, in the plea deal, all that happened is, yeah, God, he just took, he took possession of the guns. This is why the streets is dumb. Now they're calling him a snitch today online. They're calling him a snitch that he's fighting for bail in the indictment, and he had to come out and make a statement. He said, yo, 2015, my brother never did a day in jail because I claimed my shit. I did four years with no tears. Stop the cap. Now, the point of what I'm trying to tell y'all is that the streets are dumb. This is why when you get into the streets, you then almost have to have buyer's remorse because you get to realize even when you're doing the right thing and you're being a stand-up individual, people could manipulate the situation and say you're always cooperating. They use and they throw around the trigger word and the scarlet letter, which is S, which stands for snitch. They're calling this guy a snitch when he actually stood up and took the charge that the other guy could go be a rapper. Are you crazy? This is why you got to stay on the sidewalk, man, or do your crimes by your goddamn self, all right? Because trust and believe, if your name is in any quote-unquote paperwork, and by the, way, by the way, this was an article, not like actual court paperwork, but people call anything paperwork, as long as it's printed and typed, it's paperwork. This is why you can't trust the streets, okay? There's not too many educated motherfuckers in the streets that will understand what's going on to know what's snitching and what's not, okay? And also, let me just be honest, there's some ignorant people in the streets too who they don't care. Uh, you know, for them it's like, oh, you should just never say anything, which means you should just go to jail for a long time every time. Yeah, and basically not help your lawyer help you. Anyway. Get a comment box. Make you guys like and subscribe. What do you guys think about this? They're accusing Yak Gotti of snitching. He says, hell nah. I took my stuff and I did my time. What's that problem? You guys let me know. Get in the comment box. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to Bojack Economics. Boop.